Uh, on the safety side, I'm going to cover off a few topics. I'll talk about the, uh, in general, the global safety performance for half year. Uh, I want to mention uh, ICAO Annex 13 in investigations. A uh, little bit about some of the things, as Perry mentioned, that we're doing on the le leadership charter side, the transition we're making to uh, on IOSA, um, a safety hub that we've uh, implemented, and a couple of hot topics which may be of interest on GNSS or GPS interference and spoofing and runway safety. So in terms of uh, performance, uh, we've had 15 accidents globally this year or categorized as accidents. One uh, was fatal, which was of January last year in Nepal. But in general, uh, we're still continuing a trend in the right direction uh, over uh, at a rate of 0.82, which is lower than the five-year average. And also, uh, it looks like we're shaping up by the end of the year to continue with a, uh, a positive performance on the, on the safety side. When you look at it on a regional basis, you can see six regions, uh, four of them are, uh, are performing uh, well uh, in terms of trending in the, in the right direction. Uh, actually, eight regions and six are performing. And two, North America and ASPAC are, uh, are trending, I would say, upwards. However, when you look at their stats, they're still low, and they are as well below the five-year rolling average. Uh, in, the U in the North American context, we're looking at, I think it was five incidents or accidents, and no trends. Uh, we're talking about, uh, I think one was hail, another was ground damage, another one was uh, landing gear collapse, and, and the, uh, another one was uh, a hard landing. So nothing that sort of would indicate uh, any trends or any major concerns. ASPAC had two incidents. One was a, uh, uh, a landing issue, and another one was the fatality that I mentioned earlier. So all in all, the numbers for the first part of the year are shaping up uh, well. Um, getting into accident investigation. So as you know, uh, safety is the number one priority in, in our business. We, we don't just say it, we act it. It is, it is incredibly important to all our members and to all in aviation to make sure that they're running a safe operation. Part of that involves learning from when things go wrong. Um, you learn that from uh, being able to see the results of investigations as they've t as, they as they've taken place, this is uh, chart is taken from the uh, ICAO USAP uh, audits uh, reports over the last number of years, and these are the green indicates the investigations that have complete com been completed, and red indicates those that have been have not been. And as you can see, uh, some issues in every region but most importantly in the reasons where we are at risk the most. Um, so we will continue to, uh, to uh, educate and uh, advocate at ICAO. Uh, we will have a, a special session on this at the high level conference in next year in hopes that we begin to see greater uh, uh, transparency and greater completion rate on accidents uh, and investigations as uh, moving forward. In terms of some of the things that we're doing uh, internally, Safety is all about culture. Um, you know, it, it's also about standard operating procedures and, and the like, but culture obviously is a significant factor uh, in, in our business. Uh, we went through a significant change during COVID, uh, a lot of turnover, uh, and so we thought it was an appropriate time to uh, begin to sort of reassert the importance of safety culture in organizations. We launched this in Hanoi in, uh, in October uh, or, or September. Uh, we now have 35 airline CEOs that have signed. We have a target for much more in 2024. And it really focuses on a, a, a number of key tenants that are pretty basic, but it is a reminder to organizations that can permeate it through uh, uh, the, uh, their staff and uh, so on. So it's lead safety beyond words and actions, safety awareness across the airline, safety embedded in, in every strategy, all performance and measured, safety goals and the ability to resource for them, uh, trust within the organization, clear expectations and behaviors to be outlined, uh, employees to own safety and feel responsible for it, and regularly assess the corporate safety culture within an organization. So like I said, we have a, we've also established actually a board target for this to monitor our performance and progress uh, as we move through 2024 and beyond. 
We've also made a fundamental change to our uh, our IOSA audit, which has been around for uh, for quite some time. I think it was 25th anniversary, uh, last 20th anniversary uh, this year. Um, it was in need of change. It was based on compliance, which most audits had been. So show me where it's written that this is what you do. Now we're pivoting to focus on risk. So we are, uh, you know, building risk profiles and maturity indexes for our airlines and we will begin to audit on where they are most at risk based on that, inf that information. We conducted uh, a, a few trial audits in 2022. We, did, we will compete, complete 2025 uh, this year. Our plan is to do 100 next year, which is around half of uh, our audits uh, in, a run in a normal year, and uh, we'll be over 200 in 2025 with a full call over into uh, into a risk-based environment in this in this environment as well we have a direct responsibility for the auditors so we control the training we can control the performance and uh, and that's very important in terms of living and working in in an environment like this it's been well received by our members and also well received by regulators that we work closely with in uh, in constructing this um, this new uh, audit format we also created a safety issue hub. What is it? It's basically a tool to allow airlines to assess risk, global risks, uh, as well as their own. It will have uh, uh, templates for generic risk assessments, uh, which they will be able to utilize based on certain parameters uh, that are within the, uh, the hub itself. Um, we just started this, uh, this year and will continue to build off it. We also have a platform called Safety Connect, which has uh, over a thousand users, I think now at this point, uh, where they share information uh, about incidents uh, that are happening within the airline. We will be uh, taking that information as well to help formulate the risk um, uh, profile for, uh, for the industry moving forward. So most of what we're doing is focusing on where the risks are, uh, which uh, seems, which is obvious uh, 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 evolution in terms of managing safety. So the last two slides are on sort of issues that have actually come. I'll show a slide later on the data side, how uh, that sort of depicts how we were able to, uh, to identify this. It's not necessarily new, but certainly been a growing issue over the course of the last number of years, in particular because of the geopolitical issues that are taking place in certain parts of the world, which will be more illustrative to you when I show you the slide in a little while. But we are focused on GNSS uh, or GPS interference on our aircraft, uh, spoofing or jamming. Spoofing is when an erroneous signal is sent to the aircraft, which potentially could have the aircraft do something it shouldn't be doing. And jamming is simply jamming a signal and forcing the pilots to, uh, to use uh, alternate procedures because the GPS results are not accurate. Neither one of them are good in both instances uh, there are procedures in place to manage them. However, we do need solutions. So we are working with the manufacturers in particular. Uh, we actually will have a, a meeting planned with uh, both major aircraft manufacturers as well as some regulators uh, and uh, other manufacturers of the equipment on board in January to start to look at how we can operationalize and proceduralize uh, better, uh, better procedures to deal with this uh, when it does arise. We're not expecting to eliminate it but we're, we're definitely expecting to mitigate it. And the other one, which anyone that's uh, based in the U.S. is probably very familiar with this one, runway safety. And in terms of safety on a runway, we, 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 we focus our attention on two things, excursions and incursions. Incursions are like what we're hearing a lot of. And, well, it's only been a couple of incidents, but certainly get a lot of airplay and political focus uh, in, in terms of the FAA and a couple of incidents, incidents on runway, uh, on the runways uh, with air, air traffic control and uh, some aircraft involved. Um, excursions tend to fall in the category of unstable approaches, hard landings, um, weather, uh, failure of equipment, uh, failure to follow SOP, signage, and those types of things. Um, it, it's, it's something that has been, we see in our data, that it requires us to be uh, to monitor it closely. It's not an, it, our, re, our risk profile on this has not increased, but it is at a point where we need to monitor it in terms of do we believe it's just going, could end up being something that do we need to get more uh, more involved in. We do participate in 
in uh, establishing standard operating procedures. We also support, uh, this is a mouthful, the Global Action Plan for Prevention of Runway Excursions and Incursions, which is actually produced by EASA uh, and the Flight Safety Foundation in collaboration with aircraft manufacturers, airlines, and ourselves. And uh, a recent addition that is going out uh, in the, in the next uh, in the next little while, so uh, it's it's on our radar, but it isn't something that's keeping us up at night at the moment. Although there's been a lot of rhetoric around the U.S. as mentioned, some of which is routed in safety uh, or uh, in staffing levels and uh, making sure that they get the appropriate amount of funding going into the um, uh, from from the uh, current government. So uh, it's something we're watching. So that's sort of it from the safety side. Safety never ends. We live this every day. Uh, we spend an inordinate amount of time on it for good reason. Uh, but the bottom line is uh, we're safe. We continue to be safe and we are the safest mode of mass transportation on the planet and, and will continue to do so.